So this video is all about enthalpy. Let's start with this problem. Write reactions for the formation of water, methane, ethanol, and sodium chloride. So if you want to write a reaction that corresponds to the enthalpy change of formation of a substance, here's what you need to do. You need to put that substance on the right side. And you want the coefficient to be 1. On the left side, you want to write the elements that make up this compound in their natural states. So we have elemental hydrogen, which exists naturally as hydrogen gas, and water also consists of oxygen. Now to balance it, we need to put a 1 half in front of O2, because we only have one oxygen atom on the right side. And so that's how you can write the formation reaction for water. Now go ahead and try it with methane. So keep in mind, whenever you're writing the formation of a substance, you need to have one mole of that substance on the right side of the equation. So make sure the coefficient is 1. So methane contains carbon and hydrogen. So carbon naturally is a solid, and hydrogen is a gas. And all we need to do in order to balance it is put a 2 in front of H2. And so that's it. This is going to be a liquid, and these two are gases. Now what about this one? Part C. Write the formation reaction for ethanol. So ethanol consists of carbon. It consists of hydrogen gas, and we also need oxygen gas to make it. And ethanol in its natural state is a liquid at room temperature. So we need to balance it. We got two carbon atoms on the right side. We have a total of six hydrogen atoms on the right. So we need to put a three in front of H2. And we only have one oxygen atom on the right side, so we need a half in front of O2. And now it's balanced. Now for the last one, we simply have sodium chloride, which is a solid at room temperature. And it's composed of sodium metal and chlorine gas. So to balance it, we need a 1 half in front of Cl2. And so that's how you can write the formation reactions for substances such as those. Now you need to understand that the enthalpy change for this reaction is equal to the enthalpy of formation of water. If you look at the appendix in your chemistry textbook, you'll see that the heat of formation for any element in its natural state is going to be zero. Therefore, the enthalpy change for the reaction is equal to the heat of formation of this compound. The same is true for all of them. Carbon, hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, they all have a heat of formation of zero. So therefore, for each of these reactions, the enthalpy of the reaction is simply equal to the heat of formation of the product. Now let's move on to this example. Write a reaction for which the enthalpy change will be the standard enthalpy of combustion for ethane and methanol. So all you need to do for a problem like this is you simply need to write the combustion reaction for each of these substances. So starting with ethane, if you want to write a combustion reaction, add O2 to the left side, and the products will always be the same, CO2 and water. And then you got to balance it. So we need to put a 2 in front of CO2 to make sure the number of carbon atoms is the same. Now we have six hydrogen atoms on the left, so we got to put a 3 in front of H2O. So this gives us a total of seven oxygen atoms. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 1 is 3. So in order to balance it, we need to put a fraction on the left side. So this is going to be 7 over 2 for oxygen. So this reaction is going to be equal to the enthalpy of combustion for ethane, C2H6. 
So make sure you understand that the enthalpy change of this reaction is simply equal to the enthalpy of combustion for one mole of ethane. Now let's do the same for methanol. So we're going to react it with O2 as well. And whenever you're dealing with combustion, you know you're going to get carbon dioxide and water whenever you have a hydrocarbon like this. So the carbon atoms are balanced on both sides. We have one of each. Now we got four hydrogen atoms on the left. So we got to put a two in front of H2O. Now we have a total of four oxygen atoms on the right side and only right now three on the left side. So in order to get four, we need to make this number three. So I'm going to put a three over two in front of O2. Three over two times two, the twos cancel and you get three. So now the reaction is balanced. We have a total of four oxygen atoms on both sides. And when dealing with the enthalpy of combustion for this substance, you want to make sure that the coefficient is 1 because you want to find the enthalpy change of the combustion of just one mole of methanol and one mole of ethane. So the enthalpy of this reaction, as mentioned before, is going to be equivalent to the enthalpy of combustion for one mole of methanol. Now what about this problem? What is the enthalpy change for the reaction shown below using the enthalpies of formation listed in the table? In order to calculate the enthalpy change of the reaction, here's the formula that we need to use. It's basically the sum of the heats of formation of all the products minus the sum of the heat of formation of all the reactants. So perhaps you heard it as just products minus reactants. If you're wondering what the and stands for, it represents moles. In this problem, you need to take into account the coefficient in the balanced chemical reaction. So I like to write it this way. The enthalpy change of the reaction is going to equal the products, which are the four NO2 molecules and the six water molecules, minus the heats of formations of the reactions. I mean, not the reactions, but the reactants. So that includes uh, NH3 and O2. So at this point, just plug in the numbers that you have. So for NO2, we can see that the heat of formation is 34 kilojoules per mole. So replace NO2 with 34. But don't forget to multiply it by 4. And then the value for water is negative 286. And then minus for NH3, which is negative 46. Let's multiply that by 4. Now, oxygen is a pure element in its natural standard state. So it's going to be 0 for O2. So the heat of formation for any substance in its natural state, if it's a pure element, by the way, is always 0. So now all you got to do is just type exactly what you see here. So plug these numbers into your calculator. And you should get negative 1396 kilojoules per mole. So that's the enthalpy change of the reaction listed above. So this is the answer. Number four, calculate the enthalpy of combustion for one mole of liquid ethanol using the enthalpy of formation values listed in the table below. So first, we gotta write the reaction that corresponds to the combustion of C2H5OH. So we did an example like this earlier. All we need to do is react it with oxygen, and we know it's going to produce carbon dioxide and H2O. 
Now ethanol is in its liquid state. O2 is a gas. Carbon dioxide is a gas. And water, in this example, will be used as a liquid. So let's balance the reaction. We need to put a 2 in front of CO2 so we can have two carbon atoms on both sides. We have a total of six hydrogen atoms on the left, so we need to put a 3 in front of water. So now we have seven oxygen atoms on the right. We already have one within ethanol, so we need six from O2. So we've got to put a 3 in front of O2. And now the chemical reaction is balanced. So now let's calculate the enthalpy change. Because this is a combustion reaction, the enthalpy change of this reaction is equal to the enthalpy of the combustion. So to find the enthalpy of combustion for one mole of ethanol, we just need to find the enthalpy of that reaction. And we can calculate the enthalpy change of the reaction using the same technique as what we did before, products minus reactants. So it's going to be the sum of all the heat of formation of all the products minus the sum of the heat of formation of all the reactants. So these are the products. You could find it on the right side. So that's 2CO2 plus 3H2O and the reactants on the left side. C2H5OH plus 3O2. So now let's plug in the values that we have. So the heat of formation for carbon dioxide is negative 393.5. And the enthalpy of formation for liquid water is negative 286. The enthalpy of formation for ethanol is negative 278. And O2 is a pure element in its natural state, so it's going to be 0. So let's go ahead and plug these numbers in. So I got negative 1367 kilojoules per mole. So that's the enthalpy change of the reaction, which is equal to the enthalpy of combustion for one mole of C2H5OH, also known as ethanol. Now let's move on to our last question. Given the enthalpy change of the reaction shown below, which is negative 856 kilojoules per mole, calculate the enthalpy of formation of gaseous hydrochloric acid, and we're given the enthalpy of formation for ALCL3, which is negative 704 kilojoules per mole. So how can we calculate the enthalpy of formation for HCl? Well, let's start with the equation. We know that the enthalpy change of the reaction is going to equal the sum of the heat of formation of the products, which are those two, aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas. Don't forget to take the coefficients into account, minus the sum of the heat of formation of the reactants, which are aluminum and hydrochloric acid. So all you need to do in this problem is you need to plug in all the values that you have and simply find the missing value. We have the enthalpy change of the reaction. It's negative 856. So we got that. Now, we have the value for ALCL3. It's negative 704. So we got that as well. Now, what's the value for hydrogen gas? Because we didn't receive that value. It was not given to us in this problem. Now, this is a pure element in its natural state. So it's 0. That's why it wasn't given to us. Aluminum is also a pure element in its natural state. So the heat of formation for aluminum is 0. So now, we need to solve for HCl. So I'm going to put an x in place of HCl. So our goal is to calculate x. So first, let's multiply negative 704 by 2. 
and so you should get negative 1408. 3 times 0 is 0, and 2 times 0 is 0, so you could just ignore those values. Now, we have a 6x, but don't forget about the negative sign. So what we now have is negative 6x. So now let's multiply everything by negative 1, just to make life easier. So this is going to be positive 856 is equal to positive 1408 plus 6x. Now, I'm going to subtract both sides by 1408. So I'm going to have 856 minus 1408, which is negative 552, and that's equal to 6x. So now let's divide both sides by 6. So x, which represents the heat of formation for HCl, is equal to negative 92 kilojoules per mole. And this is the answer. So that's how you can calculate the heat of formation of a substance within a chemical reaction if you're given the enthalpy change of the entire reaction.